Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, welcome back. <clears throat> Today we're working on my x86 operating system. It's called StreamOS because I wrote an operating system on stream. Um, calling it an operating system is probably a little bit uh, of strong wording. It's kind of more like a kernel at this point. Um, we've got like some amount of features, and so I think it probably just makes sense to pull open like a little demo. Um, so what's happening here is I've built, I'm building my kernel, running it. Uh, this runs through like this script that like packages it in a uh, ISO with like grub, a bootloader. The bootloader boots it. And here we see like a virtual machine, QEMU, uh, that's like running the operating system. And what we have right now is like by default, it runs this like brick breaker game where I have like mouse and keyboard support. Um, I'm like drawing graphics to like the term, the VGA buffer. Um, I've got like some logging here, uh, that's going out from like the operating systems perspective. It's being written to serial, but uh, from our perspective, QEMU goes like, oh, serial output, I'll forward that to standard output, so it lets us like run it like a normal program, essentially. Um, there's like a web server on it, so if I pull open the right web browser and I go to its IP, uh, static IP right now, it's got like, hello, from StreamOS Kernel, and so like, hello, and it sends that data back, so there's got like some sort of like back and forth, we, that means we have like TCP, we have Ethernet, we have PCI, so we can talk to the Ethernet card, we have uh, address resolution, um, we're servicing our requests on like different cpus so we have like multi-core support like pretty limited um we have like usb for the mouse uh we have like clocks and like unit testing right if i, if I run like cargo test um it will like launch these tests and if they fail it'll like flag to the host system that the tests have failed uh pretty sick pretty sick uh, we have like memory allocation so in our demo here we have like some logs saying like hey i have a vector and i have a map and we have like clock support that with like a 256 hertz clock <clears throat> wonderful <clears throat> so what are we working on today? Um, today we are working on porting Doom to the OS. Because this guy on the internet said, does it run Doom? And I'm like, fuck, no, it doesn't. And that makes me not have a real OS, right? Because if it can't run Doom, it's not real, right? Doom runs on everything. Um, so that's what we're working on. And so we're a couple streams into this, like, Doom saga. Um... Stream one, we pulled together, <clears throat> we like pulled in this project called Doom Generic. So let's pull that up. Um, and it's like this fork of one of the open source Doom implementations that basically says like, hey, you should only have to implement like a few functions in order to get up and running. And I'm like, Wah, a few functions, love that. But it turns out uh, software uses the standard library. So like this is written in C and there's like a C standard library. <clears throat> and it implements a lot, right? So like things like printf, uh, that has to like interact with the operating system in order to like put text on the screen. Or things like uh, f open, right? Or we're gonna open a file. It's like, well, you would have to ask Linux, hey, I would like a file handle and I would like you to put this here, right? So these are like things that may be used and uh, we need to implement. And so what we've started doing is we've started stubbing out like a shitty version of the standard library. So we went through and we found every single standard library function that's used in Doom. And there's not like a lot of them, right? They're pretty limited. And uh, what we've started doing is we started like walking through and stubbing them out. <clears throat> and so if I run, make sure I get the incantation correct. If I start running it now, um, we should see we're starting to... Oh, shit. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. One second, one second, one second, one second. Uh, probably at the end of last stream, I didn't leave us in a good spot. Yeah, we didn't. Shit. Um, maybe if I get go back a commit, maybe this one was okay. Sorry, one sec, one sec, one sec. So if we run it, we should see... Yeah, so we see like some logs from Doom starting to run. And then we get to like stuff that I haven't implemented. And so in this case, what we're working on is uh, VSN printf. So last stream, we spent a lot of time on like a printf implementation. It's not finished by any means, um, but it's enough to get past at least the first log here. This is done with a printf. So this was, they have like a percent %p in here, a percent %d. Uh, we have like percent %s implemented. Um, and so sn printf is like a very similar function, except it... Uh, prints to a buffer. So if it was just printing to the screen, we could kind of like ignore that to some extent. 
because if we don't really if the logs weren't f correct it wouldn't really matter for our playing of doom but if they're like using sn printf to print to buffers i haven't like evaluated all of the usages of these guys and there's like a really good chance that that's like actually important right like if you were to like create a buffer of your health and you have like uh say you had like uh let's make a fake function like print like render health right and you take like int hp you might say like health buffer is a like car array and you might say like sn printf percent d over percent d hp 100 or something right and so now like all of a sudden that's actually like an important thing to have implemented sorry so like because like, then you would render that to your screen and if we didn't implement this you wouldn't get something important <clears throat> so that's what we're working on is we have to, like we we've implemented printing to screen and we just have to like adapt our implementation to work a little more uh work with like other outputs um so yeah that's the first thing we're going to be doing is porting our printf implementation to s printf and friends uh okay so what we decided to do last stream i say we it's really just me <laughs> you guys didn't have any input here well, but we implemented this in, like, two halves. So there's the, like, C half, which takes arguments, and it has this, like, variadic argument input. And the C side is responsible for um, basically iterating the arguments. <clears throat> so uh, the way that these guys come in is you have, like, a variadic function, F, and he has, like, arg as, like, one of his things, and then, like, dot, 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 dot. And so what happens here is, <clears throat> at least in x86, uh, with the C decal calling convention, uh, which is what GCC is using, it seems, uh, you have like memory, right? And you have like a pointer to where you are in memory, your stack pointer. And basically they just iterate over arguments like right to left. So they go like this argument, then this argument, then this argument, then this argument. We just pop them in here. So you get like one, two, three, four. And so what we do in our like, c code is like our stack pointer starts here and we just say like well for every argument you want to look at you just go back one so this is argument one two three right um and so that's what we're doing on the c side is we're like doing that like unsafe iteration of the stack and then on the rust side we implemented this like printf parser thing um that basically like walks the format string until it finds a percent symbol. If it finds a percent symbol, then it like flags to see like, hey, there was a percent sign. You have to like look for the argument that's associated with that. Um, then C will like push that argument in and we'll be like, well, which type of argument do we expect? We'll write that to the output. And uh, that's it, right? So then C just runs this loop and he says like, well, while you say you have something for me to give you, I'll give it to you. And then we're done. Uh, and this should uh, scale to other outputs, right? So right now we've kind of written this in a way where we say like, well, we have this like dynamic write output and uh, write is like a Rust trait for like where you can like push data and it will print it somewhere. <clears throat> like you can print it to standard output or you can print it to a string. Uh, and so what we have to do now is just make sure that like we have an implementation of this for like these versions of the uh, printf style functions that print to files and to buffers and stuff. Yeah, so last stream, I think it looks like we left it in like a slightly unfinished state, uh, like in a non-compiling state. So let's kind of start by just kind of cleaning that up. Um, let's see what it's bitching about. Let's see. Oh my god. Uh, there's a million errors here, so it's a frustrating to get here um right 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 so uh here we said we we expose our like parser structure to c through these like c wrappers right so we have like a, a new function that returns a like opaque pointer and then we were trying to implement one that's like new but it uploads to a buffer and so what we're missing here is there's no like uh in the standard library uh let's see in Rust, there's this like write trait. 
and uh, there's format write and IO write. IO write does implement for uh, writing to like a just a regular buffer. Let's see if I can find that one. Uh, there's one that just writes to a U8 slice, yeah. Um, but we don't have that implementation in the one that's available to us without the standard library. And we can't use a standard library in our operating system because we ha don't have a uh, standard library. Like It requires a libc implementation, which we don't have. We, we, that's actually what we're doing right now. Um, but there is like this like format, right? And he's just not implemented for everything. And so if we're, if we're seeing like, hey, we're, there's a buffer, and we're trying to like write to that buffer, we just have to like wrap the buffer in something that implements, right? Uh, so that's what just what we have to do here is we have to say um, in the Rust side we are just going to have a we'll call it a buff writer struct buff writer and he's just going to take in a buffer um, which is a mute u8 and we'll impl for format write for buff writer and rust will tell us what we're missing or rust analyzer will buff writer not to be confused with buffered writer also hi yeah that's a good point uh that is like a confusing name eh uh because there's already a similar a uh, similar concept uh so <laughs> can we call this something else like uh we'll call it like Pointer writer. That seems a little clearer. Uh, okay. So now we have like this thing. We'll implement it in a second. Well, actually, the implementation is really fucking easy, right? We just say like s as bytes because this guy assumes that we're writing strings. Um, we say, <clears throat> um, we take the bytes and we stick them in the buffer. So we just say a uh, buff self buff copy from we could assume these are non-overlap. Uh, can we assume they're non-overlapping? Probably not. Copy from uh, the source, which is s as bytes as pointer. Can I just do s as pointer? This guy returns. Uh, sorry, I can't jump to definition right now. He returns a constuate. So that is what I want. S as pointer. And we, the size is s len. Is length in bytes or in characters for strings? I actually can't remember. Returns the length of self. Self in his bytes, not or in chars or graph names. Perfect. Um, so is it. And then we just have to advance the buffer by that much. Because as we after we write, we have to say, like, well, we made it that far. Um, so we say self.buff is equal to selfbuff.add s.len. And that should be it. Easy. And we say we succeeded. Uh, this is clearly unsafe, but that's okay, right? Like, we, if somebody gives us an invalid pointer and we write too far, then, like, that's a problem. And eventually, we'll also have to implement, like, if they give us, like, a, a size limit, it, like, in the SN printf style functions, uh, we would just have to put a size in here that we can check. But we'll handle that as we need to. Oh, we actually need to handle that now. Uh, fine. Fine. We'll fix it. Uh, so I guess here, uh, we'll say every time we increment buff, we'll say our size is decreased by s.len. And then we just have to check if size is big enough. So we'll say let len is actually equal to the max or the minimum of min of the length and the size that we have remaining. Uh, we copy for length, and we add this length, and we subtract this length. So now we know that we will never go uh, below zero, which is important for like a u size because Rust will crash. Um, and I guess we could do like a special case for if the length is zero and return early, but. Maybe we don't have to, because it all works correctly if length is zero, if the size is zero. And now, when we construct our thing here, 
we just replace our writer with a pointer writer. And we say buff is the buff. Uh, we take in the buff and the size. And maybe that's it. Let's see if this compiles. It probably doesn't. Sick. Uh, but not, well, we'll see. Uh, because if I forget to specify my compiler, the like C code that I'm compiling doesn't pick the right one. Uh, like, because I'm compiling, it'll think I'm compiling for like x86 or x64 Linux. Um, so I just have to specify that. Uh, let me just make sure. So the size, I need to cast this to a U size. So we'll just say size as U size. I should probably get out of the habit of using these uh, casts with as because they do like integer promotion and truncation and stuff that I might not want, right? Like maybe it's better to do size try into dot expect failed to fit in u size or something just so that we get like a better, like if, if it ever doesn't fit, we don't just like continue. That might be the way to do it. Why don't you have some m thing to set your ccm variable? Uh, just because I didn't do it yet. You're right, that's better. <laughs> uh, but my control R usually gets me co has me covered, so I just haven't got there yet. Also, because I'm not really planning on keeping this around forever. Um, okay, so somewhere he's bitching that there's a missing function. Printf parser new with buff. He says imp isn't implemented because I didn't write no mangle here. So usually Rust will like. Well, I wonder if we can see what it calls it. If I look at target target debug kernel and I look for what was this called new with buff uh oops grep new with buff uh grep printf parser oh it actually so maybe Russ has decided to compile this out but I think also like it might mangle it in a way that I'm not even searching it right but it, like Russ might decide to change the name um, of a function to for whatever reasons it decides. And so if I type no mangle here, it just says like, hey, please just make the function called what I called it. And so if I recompile there, when I call that function from C, it should know it exists, which is sick. Uh, and now we're still in this like VSN printf not implemented. So let's take a look at that. Um, let's see. So we have the like C side, which we called fake libc. Rust mangling usually completely nukes the fucking original name, like ungreppable, I'm pretty sure. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> like, uh, I wonder if, like, NM. NM. Let's see if we can find any rough, Rust symbols. I guess maybe saying dash C is also not helpful. Uh. Oh, I think it's using. S Oh, no, these aren't, like, completely unrecognizable. This looks like it's kind of using the C++ naming scheme, right? Like, if I did uh, nm-c, I think we probably get, like... Yeah, we're getting something, right? Like, this this is, like, a name that I can read as a human. Uh, but maybe it was deciding to optimize that function out, that specific one we were looking for. Yeah, here, like... Here we have our kernel executor spawn. That's, like, a function like, that it has... Um, all right, so here, not here, fake libc, we have v as in printf, and here we make our parser, and then probably the implementation of everything else in here should be exactly the same as what we did in printf. Um, so maybe we should make a, like, void do printf that takes in the parser, uh, which we should rename. We actually renamed this on the Rust side, but we didn't re rename it on the C side because we don't actually care. With these like opaque pointers, as long as all of our function definitions like line up, it'll work. But the, it does have the wrong name here. But that's okay. Um, so we'll call this the uh, writer. Oh fuck it, we'll call it parser for now. We have to, we'll have to fix this eventually. Um, then what are we going to take in with parser? The format. Restrict format. And then the VA list of args. <clears throat> okay. And so that means that all of this stuff can go in here. 
And then we can call do printf with the parser, the format, and the args. And then on this vsn printf, we can do the same thing. We do printf with parser, format, and args. But here we called it ap, so we'll just call this args here. And maybe that's enough. Uh, because this like very the with the v prefixed functions, the uh, extra work of creating this like argument list and destructing and stuff uh, go away. And I guess we also have to free the parser. Cool. So let's try running it. And probably what we'll find out is that our printf implementation is not complete. And we're going to end up crashing because there's so they're using some format specifier that we don't implement. Right, here we go. Not implemented. Unimplement two size for i. So it looks like they have a percent i somewhere. And so we can just implement that. I think percent i is the same as percent d. Is that right? Let's just double check here. C, like printf in CPP reference will probably tell me what the formats of ours are. i and d are the same. So we'll just do that. i. Uh, we'll just put a B I here. And I think that's probably enough to make it work. Let's see. Okay. Oh, sick. Okay. So that V S N printf, that first call of it, we got past it. Sick. Um, now we have another one for V F printf, which is kind of odd. I would expect. Um, so we don't have any file commands implemented at all right now. So I would think that before we tried to run a VF printf, we would fail to open a file. Um, so I'm kind of curious where this is used. V VF printf. Ah, they use it to print a standard error. I see. I'm kind of curious how they're using these things. Ah, so they have error logging that they pass to standard error directly. Sure, that makes sense. Um, all right. So I guess what we can do for now, assuming that they don't ever open another file, is we can have like flags. In fact, we probably already do have flags for what standard error, standard output are. They're null. <laughs> um. So I guess what we could do is we could make our file structure. Does that make sense? Well, let's see. File start. Are these is this defined? Is like this is struct file defined anywhere? No, we have it as an opaque thing. So I guess what we could do is I'm going to assume that eventually somebody is going to try to make actual files. And I'm assuming that, like, I'm going to have to end up making, like, a virtual file system for now. That's just, like, hash map of, like, paths to, like, buffer string buffers or something. So I might as well just start stubbing out, like, the C interface for that now. Um, so let's say that we're taking a break from that and we're working on... Uh, we are working on, what is this called? Uh, stood error stood out, I guess we'll call it F right. Okay, so we're gonna have to make like a file star file pointer type. So here we can say uh, struct file. Um, do you ever wish Rust had variadic arguments or optional arguments? I'm like, I'm pretty easy. I don't really, you know, whatever works, works. Um, I do think that like variadic functions heavily increase language complexity, right? Like when you work with them in C++, it's like kind of frustrating because of just like how difficult it is to make the type system do what you want and in c it's frustrating because it's just like fucked right like in c you have like no idea no type checking to determine if the variant functions were right um maybe there's like a way to do it nicely um but like in terms of like optional arguments um i think it's pretty reasonable 
to just make another function, right? If you're if you're saying like I'm gonna take in this or not that, you could throw an option in there, or you could just write two functions. You already have to write the branch, like writing a function twice, not the end of the world. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think like sometimes it's nice. I don't really care. <laughs> like if it works, it works. Currently setting up Nix OS. We'll have to figure out how to set up Neopen with Rust. Good luck with stream. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, yeah, it's it can be a pain. <laughs> Nix is kind of fun. If you if you're getting into Nix OS, uh, yeah, it's a. I think it's fun. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I'd ever like fully recommend it. There's a lot of like pain if you try to like run software that isn't in the repos. Uh, but it is very 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 sick when you like have like a hist like a Git history of your whole OS. I like that. Um. Okay. Sorry. Where I got distracted. I was trying to make a file and let's make. The F open. Well, I guess. Hmm, how do we want to do this? Um, something in here is gonna have to flag what it is, right? So like, if it's standard error or standard output, I guess it's gonna be like a special type. So maybe we'll call it enum file. And for for now, we'll just have standard error, standard out, and that's it. Now later, we'll be able to add in like path and we'll be able to put like a string in here um and that's that's how we'll manage um like f open and stuff but for now we can just have center and stand out and so then we'll make a no mangle um pub unsafe extern c function and we'll call this like we'll create file or something i guess we have to be careful that we don't like collide with names of real software um Whatever, we'll just call this create file. And if we collide, we collide, and we'll fix that later. Um, and this will return a box. No, a mutable file pointer. And so then what we can do is we can say box new file. And I guess uh, we don't actually want to create file. We want a special functions for standard out and standard error for now. So we'll say create standard out. And this is just going to be box file, box new file stood out. And we leak that. And we'll make another one for standard error. Create standard error. Um, now we have to be careful here. Because I think that if I just wrote here create stood out and create stood error, I think there's like a good chance that this happens before my file system is like, or not my file system, my allocator is available. Um, I don't really know how when I like link C and Rust together, how like static initialization is handled. Um, but maybe I can dodge that by just making these static. So if I say like static file, uh, static stood out is equal to file stood out, and then I just return a reference to this guy. Oh, sorry, I have to make him uppercase for Rust to be happy. Uh, we can probably say and stood out as and we'll mute file. Is that right? Uh, I guess we probably have to do like a double cast here because it won't let me pretend it's mutable. So maybe, or I'll just write const here. I'll just lie. <laughs> uh, we have to say that we have to say this is file, and we'll just do the same thing uh, with first dot error. Uh, so we replace out with error. All right, sure. Because now we don't have to worry about the allocator being up for when we create these guys. And then now, when we do vf printf. We'll probably do the same thing here where, uh, well, which version they use? They used vfprintf. So we'll do the same thing that we did for printf, uh, except now we have to initialize like a different version of the parser who doesn't push to a buffer or to a standard out directly, but he implements, uh, he pushes to a file that could be standard out. So, Make a new function. 
Um, and what are we going to do? We're going to say printf parser new with buff, and we'll just call this new with file. We'll take in the file. Uh, so we'll take in the format string and the file as a mute file, probably. And we return a printf writer. The Doom implementation will probably scare Mary with all the lying and safety checks you aren't doing. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me. I think in this case, um, since the mutable pointers, uh, like, you can cast between pointers fine. You just have to be careful that you never turn those mutable pointers into mutable references when you shouldn't be. Like, you have to guarantee to the Rust compiler that you only ever have one of the mutable references. But the, you can have multiple mutable pointers, that's fine. And you, I think that casting between them is also fine, as long as you don't dereference them in the wrong state, right? Like, it's going to assume that standard out here is const. Uh, and I think that's, like, a valid assumption, because we actually, like, literally can't mutate this. Um, so as long as nobody mutates it, we're good. Um, okay, so new with file, we pass in the file, and now we have to, instead of making a pointer writer, uh, I guess we can say... Uh, match file. I guess, in reality, uh, standard, we don't have a standard error. We only have a serial console. One serial console. So in reality, uh, standard output and standard error are the same. So we can just write standard out here. And here we'll just note standard output and standard error are actually the same because we only have a single output serial console. And when we create it with the file, we'll just say, uh, we know that it's standard out. Uh, so we can say, assert eq star file is the same as file standard out. And then we can just call printf parser new with the format string. And I think that's fine. For now. For now. And here, our printf implementation and our vf printf implementation, they could actually probably be the same, right? Our printf implementation is just a file output with standard output. So we could say here that uh, we want to call vf printf We could do this. We want to call vfprintf with standard out the format and our args list. And now we've kind of saved a little bit of like duplication. Uh, I do find it interesting that you've taken an approach of writing both C and Rust cooperatively. Do you think it would have been possible to write all fake libc in pure Rust? Um, so I think that you could implement some of it. The problem here is that, like, specifically these variable argument stuff uh, are implemented as macros and std arg.h. And I don't know how, like, if I wanted to say, like, for vfprintf, they pass in, the standard library says you have to pass in a va list. And it's like, how would I handle this type and call va arg from Rust? I think it's possible, right? Probably. Right, you, you have like the same argument passing mechanism when you use no mangle. Um, but I think it's makes probably more sense here to, uh, how to say this? In the cases of these printfs, I'm happy to do the like C stuff in C. Some of like, if for something like stir dupe, I'm not gonna do like a half C, half Rust implementation. That's just gonna be pure Rust because it's, it's simple. Um, but yeah, in other cases, I have to be a little bit, I have to compromise here. I think I'll well, have to be strong. It's easier to compromise. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, do I compile? Did, I can't remember even if I was in a state or I expect this to work. Uh, let's look for the errors. Um, initializer element is not const. What is it? Makes int from pointer without a cast. Oh, 
uh, because I didn't say that these functions exist in fake libc. So it's just kind of like assuming that it, like, what a stupid thing for GCC to do by default is just assume these return ints. When, it's so silly. Um, I wonder if you'll reuse any of this work to make a user space in streamos. That doesn't seem crazy. I think there's a good chance it will, but uh, I'm definitely not going to maintain this until that point because I don't trust that it will look close enough, but I think probably I'll keep the branch around and use it to reference in the future. Um, okay, so hopefully that those just defining those two functions was good enough. Uh, nope. So let's look at what the errors are. Initializer element is not constant. Do I need to... What does that mean? Initializer element is not constant. I thought that you could just run any function in static namespace in C. Um, oh, I'm thinking of C++. Not C. That's interesting. Interesting, interesting. I was... Uh, that clears up my initial confusion about whether or not the allocator would be running. The answer is no, but it can't be. Um, okay, so what we'll do instead is uh, we'll just define these constants of standard output and standard error in Rust. So we'll just say uh, extern file star standard out and extern file star standard error. And I think actually we, can, we don't even have to do that because we've already done that somewhere else in like our headers. So in our libc implementation here. We can, instead of doing this, we can just say uh, static file star. Uh, let's think with this. We'll say standard, standard out file is a file who's equal to file standard out. That should be fine. And then we can say static stood out, which is a file pointer is stood out file reference. And we'll just say this is constant for now, fuck it. And can we say no mangle, and how do I export this to C? Do I have to say like, maybe this is good enough. I think that might be fine. We'll see, we'll see. Does that compile? It probably compiles, might not link. Ooh, still not happy. What doesn't it like? Uh, parser first use in function undeclared at layer line 72. Uh, oh, oops. Yeah. I just forgot to delete that line. We're chilling. Is libc most of the way to making it a stream OS POSIX compatibility layer, or am I oversimplifying it? I think uh, it's a lot of the way. But I think that there's other things, like POSIX defines... Uh, like ampl like file structures and stuff, right? Like it, I think that POSIX expects you to have like user bin end in your file system. Um, but in terms of like a C program, I think it is, I think you could expect that uh, like Python would probably work if your libc worked, I think. I could be wrong though. Oh my God. So, 235, it doesn't like that. What's up, 235? Oh, because I have a static variable of the same name. That's annoying. Uh, so, we'll just rename this one to stood out local. And here, he's mad that I can't use a, con like, share a const file between threads. Is there a way for me to get around that? I guess I can just wrap it in like a static file, struct static file. And we'll say this guy takes a const file and we'll say his wrapper is transparent. Don't fucking wrap him, don't align him. And uh, we'll make these, and we'll say unsafe and pull send for static file, unsafe and pull sync for a static file, just to like get around this like fucking annoying compiler. Uh, so we say that this is static file. This is static file. And he now gets wrapped like this. 
I think that this is like enough to get around the compilers. But it looks like he's still mad. So what's he bitching about? Um, some functions that we're no longer using. So we'll just delete those. And now are we good? No? Oh, I was so sure. What's wrong now? Uh, file doesn't implement debug. Oh. Or EQ, or partial EQ. Fine. Derive debug EQ partial EQ. Let's go! Um, sick. Hey, that's kind of cool. So that VF printf is starting to work. But now they're like F right unimplemented. Uh, so let's start doing that. Um, so I guess that's in F fake loop C. Do you need extern in Rust? I don't know if Rust has the extern keyword. I think that like, oh, I guess in, uh, when we have external definitions of functions, we do have like extern C blocks where you can say, here are some functions that are defined in C. And that's like kind of the same concept, right? Like when we write extern in C, you're saying like, hey, this variable exists, but like, I don't know where it's implemented. You'll just find it at link time. So I think it was like kind of the same concept. Okay, F right. So he has, what the fuck? Pointer size N M E M number of elements. Why do you need size and number of elements? I must be missing something. Uh, man, F right. Let's see. So we have reads number of elements items of data. Each element is size bytes long. Ah, from the stream point to by stream. Stream. Okay. That's easy. Uh, so we can probably it makes sense to implement this just fully in Rust. No, like C glue. Um, so we can say, uh, well, I guess I'll put it like up here somewhere. Sure. Before all this helper stuff. No mangle. Pub unsafe extern C F N file or F right. His arguments are pointer, which is a const, we'll call it a const U8, even though it's technically not. I don't mind. Uh, that just saves me from having to do an explicit cast later because U8s are easy to work with and you're technically allowed to cast anything to U8 without breaking anything. Um, size is going to be a uh, core FFI C size T. Uh, so is n number of elements is going to be a core f by c size t and we're going to have stream which is a file store so stream is going to be a mute file okay so we can assert that this file is always going to be centered out uh, so we'll say star stream is equal to file stood out because we technically don't support any other files right now. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to write that to standard out. So we're going to say, uh, let size is equal to size times num elements, right? Cause we're going to, that's how many we're, we're trying to like in bytes is the amount we're going to copy. We'll say uh, we create a slice from that. So we'll say core slice from raw parts. And this is going to be the pointer and the size in bytes. We'll call this S, I guess. And then we have to write this. So uh, we have, uh, I guess I have to convert this to a string in order to write it, which is kind of odd. Um, but I think that's okay if we just use an unchecked write and then we immediately cast it back to bytes i think that that's probably okay i don't think we do any like checking in our implementations of anything like actually utf8 related so even though this is technically unsafe and technically invalid i think it's fine for our implementation so i'll say uh print f or print sorry uh s 
as core stir from UTF-8 unchecked. S. I think that's probably fine. Let's see what happens. So something didn't compile, and the errors are like a mile up. Uh, okay, they don't like these like size Ts, so I'll just say what they are. I know that these are U32s. I think. <laughs> I actually don't know that. Stood int. We called, uh, nope, stood lib.h? Where is my definition of size t? Type def size t. Unsigned int. Yeah, okay, so these are your three t's. Uh, what's next? Uh, found u32, expected u size. Alright. And what's next? It doesn't like that uh, we have multiple definitions of fwrite because we didn't re remove the seaside implementation. Uh, so let's do that. fwrite, fuck you, you're gone. We don't need you. And uh, there's also a lot of warnings about this guy not being public, so I'll just make him public so that those warnings go away. Not that I don't have warning spam, but <laughs> uh, we can reduce it a little bit. Okay. So this is weird. Uh, using space space dash for configuration saves. That looks like a fucking bug, right? Using percent %s for configuration and saves. So where is it fucking getting this from? Configure is get default configure. And he malloc something and he says dot. Unless they're using m set configure. Yeah, something about this seems like a bug. And then unknown configuration variable, space, 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 dash, also seems like a bug. <laughs> so, uh, let's see if this is getting called at all. So, can we just say, like, panic, C, default configure. It must be. But uh, let's just double check. So we'll just say that this guy exists. And when we run, hopefully we see a crash there. No, interesting. So someone is calling m set config dir. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, C doom data or null m set config file names. There is only a few places where these are getting set, so it's probably getting called with null. And they do a null check there. That's really odd. That's very odd. Maybe my malloc is broken? Oh, but like we should be crashing here when we call get default configure. Um, okay, so what function are we calling? Work, or let's just double check if that's the only place. Using percent %s for configuration and saves. This is the only place that that's written. Let's just panic here, just to make sure that like we're running what we think we're running. Because that should fucking crash, but it doesn't. What the fuck? Like, our panic thing does, should crash the OS. What the fuck? Oh, it's not recompiling Doom Generic probably. Fuck off. Okay, um... So usually, like, what we have to do is we have to we tell our build script for Rust to run our C compiler, um, and we say rerun if changed these this file. But we're not doing that for all of the like Rust C files. So we'll say for C file in C files, we'll just yoink rerun if that file changed, and we'll pass in the C file. Consider removing the reference, sure. 
moved after about you move here. Ah, oh, fuck. So here we will make this a vector of whatever, and we'll collect this so that we can iterate it twice. There we go. So now hopefully I see a fucking crash. That's all I want. Is I want it to say default config value somewhere. Ah, sick. Okay. So where the fuck was I where that's important? <laughs> Here. So we're assuming that we hit this oops, path where it calls the default configger and something goes wrong. Okay. So we are expecting to use this configger, which says dot and then backslash zero. And so why is this guy now printing something that's fucking not that? Bug, 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 bug. Um, I wonder if we'll get lucky and GDB will work and let us inspect the memory here. That would be cool. Uh, so let's just see if we can uh, break at this file. Uh, so we'll run and we'll ask our script to start QEMU with a GDB server. And then we'll open up our development environment in a second terminal. And... Oh, no, well, gdb, hx run.gdb. Uh, looks like we're not lucky. So I don't know why. Sometimes gdb seems to work really well for me here, and sometimes it seems to be, like, absolutely fucked. This is one of those cases where it's absolutely fucked. Um, so let's just get a little crazy with it and say, what would we see at config dir 0 and 1? Let's see, we should see a dot ASCII and then a zero. Um, and so this at least lets us bisect if the it bug is in our like string stuff or not. Okay, so that's clearly bugged. <laughs> um, so here, Maybe our malloc is not working correctly. Maybe we're like giving out invalid memory malloc. Uh, so that'll be in the Rust side. And malloc, we're supposed to re just call Alec, who returns a pointer. So I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, I guess there's a chance that this is wrong. I wonder if we can. Um, Put char. Let's try that. Put char configure zero and configure one, just to like remove the printf parsing stuff from the equation. Just to see. Okay. So put char is claiming the right thing. So why is printf not? Uh, I guess we should write percent %c here. Just to compare. So it looks more like a printf bug than a uh, like memory bug. Aha, okay. So our printf, we need we haven't implemented percent %c, so let's just fix that real quick. Um, so c goes to format character. We have to implement that, so we'll just shove a char in here. And uh, all the places where we use ints, we need to specify char. So here we say that the size of a character is actually uh, the size of an int. Because uh, variadic arguments in C get promoted to integers or doubles, so even though we've like passed in a single character, we actually have to treat it like an integer 
uh, when we parse the the values. And is that it? That does look like it. Oh, here. Here when we print it, uh, we take the value as a const u8 and we print it as a character. Um, is there a formatter to print a u8 as an ASCII character? Let's see. There's like rust u8 to ASCII. Um, oh, you just write as char. Sure. Seems reasonable. Okay. So, we'll say printf gives me this. And here we'll say before this, puts gives me this and print, print slash a print a backslash n and so now we should be able to see the difference between like what we get when we call puts and we call, get when we call printf okay yeah so clearly something's just fucking broken here um okay so maybe we look at uh how are you able to copy the file name and line number in Vim like you do for breakpoints? Oh, I have a little macro for it. Um, I actually don't know if it's safe for me to show my NeoVim config on stream. One sec. <laughs> Let me just uh, pop open a new terminal real quick. Hello, new terminal. Middle click. New terminal. Here we go. Um, and we'll just go to my NeoVim config. Uh, config and then config in it Lua and I'll just copy the line out because I don't know if there's like something in here that I shouldn't show. Uh, so this is what I do is uh, I just have a command to like run this, <laughs> which is a uh, way for me to get the line number and I just copy paste that anyways uh let me make sure that I've closed that window now looks like we're good and yeah we're fine oh actually I showed it anyways well luckily there's nothing in here that's dangerous <laughs> whoops after all that okay um back to this guy so this guy saying star arg as char, I guess. Maybe. Um, I guess there might be something that I'm not understanding correctly here. Um, how can I look? All right. So what I wanted to do here is I wanted to uh, print out what uh, this is. So like, what is a dot? Uh, can I, in Python, I thought I could just print this as an int. Uh, but I guess not. Can I say, like, int from this guy? Nope. <laughs> I thought it would be faster for me to do it in Python, but I've forgotten my syntax. Python byte to int. <laughs> uh, int from bytes. Sure. Int from bytes this. Really? Ugh. Ugh. Fine, I'll do it in C where I'm like, where I know the rules. Uh, so we'll say int main void. And we'll say uh, printf. And I'll say uh, dot cast to an int. Include standard IO. GCC dash O test test dot C. We run test. So we see the number 46 is what we should expect. And so here, let's maybe print out 
what we're getting from push arg. So here we can say, uh, if we get a car, let's just see, uh, Let's see, let's see. We'll see what like we're getting if we print this directly. I guess we know that it's wrong. Um It would be nice to be able to like ins it's like an alignment thing, little Indian versus big Indian or something. Well, the Indianness is little, so it should match up, but it could be an alignment problem. Um could be. If maybe like when I call printf with like a car argument, if it's not aligning the way I thought it should. Um, well, what we can do here is we can, in the C side, when we iterate our VA list here, uh, we can say, where's our do printf? Uh, we can puts a star arg or something. Put char arg. Maybe that will help us debug in some way. Kind of grasping, but we'll see. Here I'm thinking that if I print out there what I get, if we see the right thing, if we see something different, then we can like bisect if it's like a printf problem or like an argument parsing program problem. Uh, but that's not working for some reason. Um, maybe because put char is supposed to be star arg. Um, yeah, okay. So here we're seeing that the debug tick printed twice, uh, which is kind of indicating the wrong thing. Uh, that's interesting. So I wonder what happens if I call this, uh, with, cast it to an int manually first. Does that change the behavior? Uh, that's the same. Did you see this guy's comment? Yeah, it's star arg as i32 as car. I'm pretty sure that's, like, not the... I don't think that's it. I think it's more likely that it's, like... See, on the C side... I'm still seeing uh I'm still seeing problems. So I think it's it's more likely in my head like something about me moving to the wrong spot on the stack. Um So let's think. Let's think. Um so maybe So casting this guy to an int manually not change anything. And it must be that, uh, okay, so here in do printf, wh what's the path, what's the path here? Uh, we're calling printf directly, so that's printf. He has a format, and we're saying, well, we'll, we'll say here is your arguments, and we'll pass those args in. So I wonder if... So first of all, did these change? So maybe it's like something to do with my VA argument. So if I look at std arg, here I set the argument pat pointer to to the format plus one, which is like if I if we have like format is a a const char format plus one should be could should be the same as uh sorry this is and format plus one so this should move forward four bytes because the pointer is four bytes that seems reasonable that like this argument list he shouldn't change depending on um depending on anything like when i pass them in here it's not like like my stack is moving sure but uh my where this like argument is on the stack shouldn't change so maybe what we should do is we could print 
out. Oh, using printf here is so sketchy because we're, we're like, we can't do that. Um, do I have like a way to just print an int here? Um, like directly, I guess we can just make that function up. Because I want to like print the pointer of format and then the pointer of the argument that I'm passing in. I guess in Rust, we can just do that. So here, and why am I typing Rust as a file name? Let's look at uh, our libc implementation and we'll say push arg and we'll just print the value here. So we'll say uh, print info or print line, I guess. We'll say arg is at this address. Arg here. And when we construct our writer, we'll also put print the arg address of the format string. Uh, so here we'll say format printf format string at this address. And now when we run, we should start getting some clues maybe. Ugh. Errors. How dare you? Uh, because I wrote printf here. Print line. Multi-language is hard. My brain gets like a little confused about APIs and stuff. Okay. So here we got format string here at this address. Argument here. Which seems like really far. 2D? Like that's crazy far from 2.9, right? Am I, am I high? Oh, oops. Uh, the format string, I should actually be getting the address of the format string. Fuck. Uh, right, of course. Uh, so maybe we have to somehow... If I if I get the address of this format string, that's not right. Um, okay, so for now... How do I want to handle this? We can just say... I guess we'll just make a print address function. That's probably the easiest way to do it. No, mangle. Pub unsafe function print address. And we'll put address is a mute u8. It doesn't really matter. And we'll say print line address is at address. And then here we'll say print address format. I think that's reasonable. Oh, but print address, he's going to be mad that doesn't exist. So we'll just say uh, void print address. This guy actually needs an ampersand on him. And we'll say that he takes in a void star. Sure. There we go. Okay. I think that will compile. Did you guys know about Rust C variatic unstable feature? No, I did not. Okay, here we go. So we have our first address is this guy. This is where the format string supposedly was passed in on the stack. And we go from B0 to 88, which seems wrong. Hand wavy. Um, so I might be printing the wrong thing here. Um, maybe, let's see. So here when I push arg, what am I printing again? I'm printing a pointer to the argument, which seems like the thing that I want to print. Um, so here, maybe if I put char star format plus one, I should see the period, uh, not the backtick, right? Because here I'm expecting, uh, sorry, not star format, and format plus one as a car pointer. So here I'm saying, basically we're trying to validate if the argument list 
stuff that we're doing is like correct, I guess. I guess what we'll, we'll first we'll print the address. We'll say um, first argument is equal to this guy cast to a car star, which is like just one thing past the format. And not the format, the address of the format. So this should tell us what we have, and we can print address of the first arg. And then we can print the first car, the first argument. And what I'm hoping to see is I'm hoping to see a period there. Give it a sec. Give it a sec to run. Okay. Uh, for what am I looking? At? Okay, so this is the address, address plus one, and I'm seeing like a, something completely fucked. Format string here. Oh, there's too many prints. Fuck. <laughs> uh, add puts this address, this address, this. Then I see the period. Okay, wait, wait, that's good, that's good, that's good. And then my printf is fucked. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, wait, wait. So that's a good indication that, like, uh, this is a problem with my variadic argument parsing. The the data is coming in at the right spot, because we see a period like we want right here. Uh, at this address. And so then the question is, like, why my argument at this address? This address is the address where it should be. And so we can just start kind of going backwards there. Uh, oh, because this is just fucking wrong. This is so stupid. We have the args passed in here already. We're not supposed to do this variable argument stuff in the vfprintf implementation. Oops. Oops, 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 oops. So I just reinitialized my argument list, pointing to the wrong fucking thing. Which is obviously going to be broken. Now, I think... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so if I get rid of all this like extra debug printing, I'm pretty sure we're gonna see the right thing now. Uh, so where was I? In like Doom generic somewhere. We'll just delete all this and run. Fingers crossed. Using okay, so there's a bunch of oh shit, the fuck! I've still got some extra print somewhere. Uh, so, oopsies, oh god, oh god, oh god, um, using this, so this is using calling printf, printf, no extra prints in here, this guy, no extra prints, this guy, no extra prints, so it must be on the rest side, um, print, this guy is an extra print, this guy's an extra print. Okay. I think now we should see the correct log where it says using dot for configuration. Using... Okay, we're close. Uh, there's like an extra like A hat printed here. Which is fucking annoying. Um, I wonder if that's... Hmm, where would that be coming from? There's a, I think I, there's a good chance that I just left an extra print somewhere that I didn't want. Push arg. Uh, so we have string. No, okay, let's just double check that if I comment this out, if does the a hat go away or does it stay in? The a hat stays in. So somewhere I'm just printing something that I didn't want to fuck. Oh, that's annoying. I don't even know, like, where to look for that. It's somewhere, like, I guess it would be in the printf loop. We have, we create our parser, and then we call do printf. Do printf. Advances the thing. Says put char arg. There's the bug. And did I fix the commented out thing here? Yeah, I did. Okay. Now I think that we should have a correct string. Hopefully. Using dot for configuration saves. Thank God. Unknown configuration variable, joystick physical button zero. 
Okay, fucking finally. So now we're back in a state where printf is working, our vf or vsn printf is working, and our vf printf are working. And now it's pitching out flush unimplemented. So, uh, I think here we're just gonna say no files, no flushing, baby. And I think that's probably fine to just skip that f flush. Because normally that would be like, hey, I want to like take this file and I've written a bunch of stuff to your like internal buffers and I want you to like actually write those disks now. Well, speaking of, those will fucking lie. Um, and uh, so we can just do nothing there. Now it's complaining that the system call isn't implemented. So this is supposed to call, run like a binary on your system. Um, we've checked the only implement, the only place that they're using this is uh, to call Zenity. To check if it exists here. Oh, maybe there's a couple places. So, but here they're calling, is Zenity available? And Zenity is like, I think a, a GTK thing to like show a dialog, if I remember correctly. Zenity, GTK. Zenity allows you to create various types of simple dialogues. Yeah, so it's just like a command you can run to like pop up into a box. And we're just, they're asking, is it available? And we'll be just like, fuck no. <laughs> this is a failure. So say no command can run. We have no binaries, idiot. Um. Hey. Okay. So we actually don't crash anymore. Nothing happens. I don't know what if there's something supposed to be happening right now. Uh, but that's a really good sign. So, let's see if we can figure out uh, what's going on here. So here we call doom generic create. And we'll say, after this, we'll just say doom generic has been created. And let's see if that ever gets printed. No. Okay, so we're getting like stuck somewhere in the doom generic create function, probably. So let's see if we can start trying to figure out where that is. Normally I would say it. we should just use GC, GDB, uh, but we've been kind of unlucky with GDB recently. So instead, uh, we'll just see, we'll bisect like this. DG init done. And here we'll say, Doom main done. Obviously this last log won't print, but I wanted to write it for some reason. I don't really know why. Okay, so init doesn't finish. And let's look at uh, DG init. What the fuck does that do? Oh, oops. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, DG init finishes really early because we do, we don't do anything for init and we're in D doom main. So we look for D doom main, which is somewhere. Hello. Here we go. Uh, so we can kind of guess where we are by the fact that we got past M load defaults. Load system defaults and we have unknown configuration variables somewhere. That's probably here. So I wonder if we can say, we can just start bisecting. So we can say printf, setting, config, file names, binding variables, loading defaults, saving defaults, and here we'll say, looking for wad. I doubt we're gonna get much farther than this, so let's just take a little quick peek skis. Binding variables. Okay. So let's look at uh, D bind variables. And where could he be getting stuck?
Uh, so we know that there's an unknown configuration variable somewhere. So we know that we're getting probably to this, right? If I look for I bind joystick variables. We're looking at joystick physical button here. Um, so maybe it'd be interesting to see if we ever get out of this. But have finished joysticks, baby. Let's see what gets if that gets printed. God, I wish that GDB was just working. So we never get here. So we must be getting stuck almost certainly here in M bind variable. So M bind variable. This is probably a void function. And I guess we can look at where that's a unknown unknown configuration variable so this is coming from get default for name and then he's returning null probably a oh, result is uninitialized so oh, here it's null it's still null we return null and then he returns false here, but here, what, what function were we M bind variable, which gets this guy, he sets it to null, returns true. So what's the problem, right? Um, maybe we can print here, setting percent %d, and we'll pass an i here, and we'll see if that gives us a clue. Maybe we're like infinite looping for some fucking reason. Nope, so we set zero, we get stuck in M bind variable, and I don't really understand why, because we have our location, joystick physical buttons, I guess. Right, we look for the name. Oh, this is just a null pointer deref. Because this returns null, so we can just say if variable is equal to equal to null but i guess why is this returning null shouldn't he not what is doom defaults doom defaults list oh hold on this looks like a bug Right, the fact that we're getting joystick physical button zero dot is probably a mistake. So we're doing SN printf name, size of name. Um, and we're trying to print joystick physical button percent I. And we're getting zero dot. So maybe in our libc implementation, our uh, printf is either going too far or printing a dot when it shouldn't. Um, so I wonder, are you printing an int as a float? That seems possible. This does, does say as i32, but it does seem very possible. Um, we could just say printing, printing int like this and just double check that. It seems like a good test. Hey, thanks for the raid, man. Appreciate it. So this guy's... Printing a zero. Yeah, okay, so, sorry, I should... <laughs> streamer time. Uh, big raid. Appreciate it. Uh, what we're working on today is we are implementing Doom for our x86 operating system. So, uh, we have this, like, x86 operating system. It runs in QEMU right now. He uh, boots this, like, kernel. And in our kernel, we have, like, a bunch of features, right? They're kind of listed up here. And what we've done now is we're working on like 
pulling in Doom Generic, uh, which is like this project on GitHub, this guy. And he says like, hey, I'm going to, if you implement these like few functions, then you should be able to run Doom. Great. Um, but it turns out software uses the standard library and our operating system um, doesn't have a standard library because we don't have a user space, right? We're just like a fucking kernel. So if somebody calls like printf, we're like, what the fuck is printf? And so what we we're doing right now is we're like iterating through all of the places where this project uses uh, standard library functions. And what we've done is we've like stubbed them all out with things that'll just crash the operating system. And we're working through them one by one to try to like get to a point where this will boot up, right? So that's where we're sitting right now. Um, and so what we're looking at is uh, right now we're seeing a bug in some of the initialization stuff on the Doom side. And they're going like, hey, this key doesn't exist. And we're seeing like an extra period at the end. We're trying to figure out like, where the fuck did that come from? Because we just implemented printf and we just implemented sprintf, which is like copy pasting the buffer from like copy pasting the format string into a buffer using printf rules. And it's not working as expected. So that's what we're working on. Uh, Hope you guys stick around. Hope you find it enjoyable. Uh, yeah, so this guy's saying joystick button, physical button number. Is this NeoVim? Yeah, it is. Sure is. Um, okay, so where were we in the middle of this? We were debugging. We were looking at our, our printf implementation. And we were saying, hey, this guy's getting this, like, he's printing the right integer. So we're not accidentally printing a float here. Um, and... Then we wanted to look at, well, what are, what else are we writing here? So we'll write here. I guess we'll leave that login for now, and then we'll put this guy here, and we'll say, uh, about to write this guy. We'll pass this guy in. And we'll see if that's giving extra shit. I saw telescope. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, telescope, pretty good plugin. Uh, this, also, yes, this also doesn't have a user space. This is a telescope, yeah. W, w yeah all right so here about to write unknown configuration variable cool we got this guy about to write nothing so i guess wait where is this quote coming from about to write i guess here we want to start with the new line here um okay so he says, I'm about to write unknown configuration variable. Then I'm about to write nothing. Printing int zero. So why, why doesn't he like, where's this dot coming from? Because I don't see that coming from here. Oh, wait, maybe that dot is part of the log. Hold on, hold on. Maybe that's just fine. Uh, unknown configuration variable. Oh no, he does say percent %s then a dot. I'm getting confused by so much fucking writing. Okay, so this dot is showing up inside. And maybe I'm not like null terminating in my sn printf implementation. Oh, yeah, that's almost certainly it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I did this like printf, and then I s did an sn printf that's based off printf, but I never terminate the buffer. Ha ha! Okay, 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 okay. So here, um, I guess the question is, when I write to standard output, should I be writing the null terminator? And the answer is no. Um, but when I'm writing to a buffer, I should be. Okay, okay, okay. So here, what do, what do I fucking do in my printf? Uh, here, I loop until the character is equal to zero, then I break. But I should have a way to, like, write the, the new line, the, the null terminator, if I want to. So I'll just say, write new line is a boolean in my state machine. And I'll say, uh, if write self write new line is equal to zero... Oh, sorry, is true. I guess the, uh, this is just a boolean. So I can say if write new line, um, then I will still, I will write it and then break. Um, 
So how do I handle this? Self format string add one and break. And then I guess the problem there is if I do that, then um, I won't know, like right now the only condition I have is if like where I am in this list is, or in this pointer, where in my iterator, am I starting at a new, at a zero? If I am, I break. But then if I'm going to print the new line and then I advance myself one further, uh, that won't work. Uh, and the, so what I'm doing here is I'm like iterating the pointer and then I say, after I get to like the end of it, then I say, well, here's where I'm going to, uh, I'm going to check where I started and where I ended and that's what I'm going to write out. Um, and so what I want to do here is I probably want to keep track of if it's finished. Uh, so I'll say finish is also a Boolean. And, uh, here I'll say if char is equal to zero, finished is equal to true. Sorry for you, so doom pill is unfazed by a sudden stream of messages. Uh, yeah, oops, uh, did I miss anything important? Lots of clapping. Everyone's clapping. Uh, lots of, yeah, okay. <laughs> welcome everyone. <laughs> appreciate, appreciate the support. Um, okay. So here, if self new line is zero, we just advance the pointer one further. So I guess I just do this. Or I guess I just don't break here. Um, yeah, here we go. Here we go. If self, if right new line is false we br we break otherwise we do the normal thing but we set ourselves to finished perfect 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 okay so i think now we just have to set this right new line variable i think i guess we should check if everything else is still fucking broken but uh we'll get there in a second so when we construct this thing uh in the normal thing we'll say what right new line false and finished is always false on the start. And then I guess, oops, here, we should say uh, if finished return zero or something. If self.finished break. I don't know. This isn't definitely not like the cleanest way to do this. I'm just trying to like get into like the right frame of mind here. So, um,. If car is zero, if we hit the null terminator, we set finished. We don't want to do this all the time, but we do need to return a zero somewhere. Um, yeah, I guess that's fine. So we always do want to write something, even if the null terminator is there. I guess we just say uh, if self.finished return zero, but we probably should return zero anyways in this case. Maybe all of it's fine. Maybe I didn't need this extra finished Boolean because the return zero that comes from this guy will could, will tell the like C side not to continue moving. So maybe I just don't need this. Uh, so we can say if car equals zero and not self write new line. Cool. Uh, we break. Otherwise, uh, we say here, if right new line, we can behave as normal. There we go. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's right. Pretty sure. And so now all we need to do is uh, specify whether or not we want that right new line function. Why am I saying new line? Hello, my hi? This is right null terminator. Right null the fuck am I talking about? Jesus. Right. No. Are you implementing libc for your OS and Rust? Kind of. Um, I'm not actually implementing libc. I'm just implementing enough of libc to run Doom. And it's not like a real libc in that like it's converting like your C functions into syscalls. Um, instead, because I'm like running everything in ring zero uh like there's no like user space to kernel space happening there's no syscalls it's just like i'm just writing the <laughs> like just do something sane with what they're asking for essentially um okay so i'm running it with buff i want write null to be true 
And I think that should compile. Wow, I actually didn't think that would compile. I lied, uh, but it did compile, which is cool. And we got past that fucking problem there, which is pretty cool. So before we were seeing that it was saying like unknown configuration value because it was like putting some extra shit on the end of its buffer. But now that we fixed that like accidental non like non writing of the null terminator, uh, sprintf is working correctly now which is pretty fucking sick well correctly as far as we've observed we think it might be working right <laughs> we're not seeing any obvious problems yet um unsafe precondition met not met or violated slice from raw parts requires the pointer to be aligned and non-null the to and the to so where would this maybe be coming from there's a bunch of places where this could be happening from raw parts sorry Maybe only a couple. So, it being an F right seems pretty likely. So we'll just, you know, shove a little prints in each of these. We'll shove one in F right and one in advance and we'll see which one's getting triggered. So it's going to be a Doom OS essentially. Well, this is kind of like a side quest in the operating system development. Um, the idea is uh, someone on the internet said I couldn't run Doom. Uh, and I want to run Doom. Is this Doom in the right window? Oh, that's deceiving. No, this is a maze that's been here for, like, since I started streaming. Uh, because, uh, I want it to be, like, TikTok. <laughs> where, uh, you have, like, something to stimulate people when they're not really, like... Because coding's boring, right? I'm surprised that anybody's watching this. But if there's, like, a thing on the side to keep, like, stare at, then... Maybe, you know, you can, like, listen and watch the guy walk through the maze. So this is, like, the Windows 95 screensaver. It'll just re-implement it for, for shits and gigs. Yeah, yeah, it looks like the old Windows screensaver. That's the... That was the inspiration, for sure. Okay. So, where were we? We're at this, like, from raw parts. He doesn't like that it's non-null. So I guess here we can check if it's null. So we'll say a print line. From raw parts and we'll log it and we'll write start I guess I guess he shouldn't be ever be null here that's kind of surprising but we'll see maybe somebody's passing in a null format string I'm here only for the maze yeah I can see that <laughs> um so maybe it's also not aligned correctly but I didn't think that there needed to be alignment for a u8 slice And the total size of the slice is not to Oh, let's check the size as well. Uh, so here we have this guy. Let's just see what he's printing. Maybe our size is like really crazy. Um, what's he bitching about? He's saying that try into because he doesn't know the type. Oh, fuck off, man. Uh, okay. This is a, we'll just say size equal to this temporarily. And then we can pass it in here and here, and hopefully it'll automatically deduce the type. Come on, baby. Yeah, okay, so this is just like unreasonable pointer and size. Right? Like, all of these guys are succeeding, but now what? Like, all of a sudden, he's not? What up with that? This must not be where it is. Like, am I missing another part where this could be failing? F right. Here. Oh! No, multi-boot, not there, because multi-boot stuff is, like, only on initialization of the operating system. Um, it could be in the UHCI stuff, but that seems unlikely. Like, none of this seems, like, Doom-related. Like, this is the network card, this is the USB stuff, this is on boot, so it should only be from the libc side. Okay, let's just sandy check. If I just comment out, like, we'll just say, if you F right, go fuck yourself. And see if we still crash. No? Okay. And we'll say, if you're trying to do this in... Printf, also go fuck yourself. And do you still crash? 
Uh oh. Uh oh, he doesn't like that because size can't type deduce anymore, so we'll just say this is a u size for now. Um, and he's also still crashing. Okay, okay, so that's uh interesting. So maybe the from raw parts isn't just being directly called by me, which is a giant pain in the ass, man. Because if, if my GDB was working, it would be easy to just set a breakpoint in the panic, and then we could just backtrace and figure out where the bug is. But it's been, like, fucking me. So I, it, like, I guess we'll just try it again, just in case it's, like, fixed itself. But that's so fucking annoying. Okay. Um... Oopsies. So let's... Uh, let's see. We, we, we will go into main, and we'll look at our panic handler, and we'll grab up the line, and we'll go into our GDB script, and we'll break here. We'll make sure that, like, target, target, debug, kernel. So I'm almost certain that's the right thing. Um, so GDB equals one, cargo run. This is running target, target, debug, kernel. So that's right. And if I say GDB dash X run dot GDB, Please, 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 breakpoint. Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck you! So, there's something wrong. God. That's so frustrating. Um, how do I debug this now? Fuck. Do you think that it's some sort of weird GDB issue with debug symbols? I, I thought that last time. I've seen in the past, actually, if I, like, hit control c sometime in GDB... It sometimes, like, fixes it. Right? Like, the those are working, but... Oh, there we go. See? Like, there. Whatever the fuck I just did there by, like, forcing it to, like, breakpoint over and over again. Now, all of a sudden, like, the OS is in, like, a state where GDB can, like, set the SIG trap and have it work. So, that's really fucking annoying. I don't know what that is. But, uh... Whatever. <laughs> so this is in C string from pointer. Aha! Yeah, okay, what annoying log. So they're passing in a null pointer to something, and I just have to handle that case. Did you have this GDB issue before you impl implemented multicore? Maybe? But yeah, you're right that that's worth thinking about. But while I was implementing multicore, I did... I was using GDB a lot. It seems to be like... Uh... No, I'm not sure. Maybe it's when I started using, like, the GDB, or sorry, the Grub ISO. Not sure. Not sure. Um, okay. So, Seaster, somewhere, I'm converting from here. So, somebody's saying, like, hey, print this thing, and if it's null, my guy just goes, like, I can't fucking deal with that right now. Um, so, we should just look at what the printf rules are. Or when you pass a null pointer. Does it is it supposed to print null? Is it undefined? Oh, it's officially undefined. May print null. Alright. <laughs> well, you've me convinced. Good enough. So we'll say uh, let C string pointer is equal to whatever the fuck this says. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Uh, we'll say if C sir pointer is null, we write, uh, oops, if C string pointer is null, we write null, and there is a bunch of other shit on here, that's fine, we write null, otherwise, we actually try to parse the pointer and write it out. And now we don't need GDB anymore. Run it. Not implemented. Un unimplemented two size row. Okay, we're getting farther. Sick. Sick, sick, sick. Uh, thanks for... <laughs> thanks, Zoomity, for explaining to people who are a little lost. I, that's my... <laughs> I should have been doing that, but I appreciate you for picking up the slack in there. Um, okay. So, now we're back in another spot where somebody's trying to print something in Octal, probably. This is not unimplemented two size for O, which I know is a log from, like, the printf parser. And we just know that there's, like, a bunch of 
percent signs that we haven't implemented yet, and one of those is almost certainly O, and he's saying, I want octal representation. So let's just quickly bang that one out. Um, so somewhere in here, we have printf format specifiers to our internal representation. So here I'll just throw in a byte of O and say format octal. We now need to add octal as one of our options. So we'll put octal here. And the size of the octal, uh, the argument that has been passed to an octal is going to be the same as the one for an int and for hex and for car. Um, because this, this is the, uh, the size of the item on the stack for a variadic argument in C. And we learned last stream that the variadic arguments, uh, they will always be upcast to ints or upcast to doubles, depending on if they're floats or integer types. What functions in C are part of libc? For example, these string copying functions, which I bet are used in Doom code, are those part of libc? Yeah, basically like anything in the standard library. Um, like if you include anything that you expect to have, that's all of those. So yeah, string copying, printf, mem copy, like file, IO, everything. That's all part of libc. Um, okay, so we were looking at octal representation. And so the only thing we have to do now is uh, write out the octal one as well, which we can just do with probably, I bet you the formatter is the same here. So I can probably just say colon O. I actually don't know. Uh, I guess you should unwrap your write for the null string. Oh yeah, good, good call, good call, good call. Not that it matters. Not that I think that an unwrap is any better than a kernel warning. Um, <laughs> or sorry, not like a, a uh, compile time warning. But you're right, we can we can nuke that warning if I throw a little unwrap on there. Cool. Unemployed two size for this. Okay, so now we're at the point where we kind of skipped a lot of stuff. Um, specifically, oh, sorry, let me, I'm just, I'm just remembering that I added a print in here and it's like really pissing me off when I'm looking at this. So just let me, <laughs> one sec, one sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. One sec. Okay, so... There we go. And now it's saying no implemented two size for a dot. And so now we're like at this point where in printf, um, there's these like format that goes percent sign, then one or more flags that modify behavior of the conversion, which is these guys, like a space, a zero, blah, blah, blah. Um, an integer value or star that specifies the minimum width field width, followed by an integer or star that specifies the precision of the conversion, length modifier right like i've just kind of like skipped all of these and said well it'll probably only be the format specifier um so now somebody's actually trying to do a format specifier they're trying to say like please show this many decimals and i'm just like i don't know how to deal with that um so maybe we could either we could either <laughs> fix it right or we could look for whoever the fuck is calling that and just tell them not to <laughs> so uh I wonder if that's an easy thing to search for. Uh, so that would be something like I could grep for like a dot percent dot. And uh, this is probably the only one right here. So <laughs> we'll just kind of throw that here. And uh, who else is calling it? There's a couple of them. We'll just kind of... Oh, but these are SN printf, so they kind of need those or else the the it could be like undefined. Fuck. Okay, fine, fine. Uh, fine, 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 fine. We'll leave them in. And what we'll do instead is we'll... Assume that there's that's the only optional thing that can happen. Fine, fine, fine. Do libc implementations implement POSIX for us if this call? I think, yeah, I think Zoom's got got it. It's like there's POSIX is a standard that has more than that, right? Like things like I think that user bit like having user bin env is like part of the POSIX standard. Um, but I think that like also having a function called write 
<laughs> like or like a f right is also part of POSIX. So libc implements a lot of the stuff that's POSIX, but maybe not all of it. Um, okay. So what we have to do now is before we were looking for percent signs, we have parse format specifier. And so now we can't just get away with assuming that the only thing in here is the format car. Um, we need to check if it's a period first. So we'll say if has period, uh, let me think about this. Let me think about this. Uh, I think, okay, so we're at an hour 50. We've got a lot of people here, which is a good time to plug the YouTube. Um, and I think that like, I, I want to think about how I want to implement this, which might take a little more thought than I'm willing to put on stream right now. Right. Cause like I try to, I try to stream for around one or two hours and I'm hit, I'm close to the two hour mark. And I think this is probably going to take me a little, put me a little over where I wanted to go. So I think what we'll do here is we'll say, thanks for watching everyone. Appreciate you coming by. Um, I know that some a bunch of you jumped in halfway through the stream. And so it's probably kind of hard to pick up on what's going on. Um, but I hope that you were interested enough uh, to come back another time. So if you like what you saw, I stream most days around one or two o'clock Pacific time. Um, and if you're not watching live, if you don't want to watch live, there's a YouTube channel linked in the Twitch description, which has all of the VODs. They go up to YouTube. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube and you want to come by and say hi, uh, feel free. There's a Twitch link in the, in the YouTube description. Uh, for most stuff, the code will end up on my GitHub. So I'll post it in chat here, as well as uh, in the YouTube description. And uh, yeah, I think that we're probably gonna spend a couple more days on this Doom stuff, uh, because it looks like it's actually taking longer than I initially predicted. Uh, so we'll be back at it again tomorrow at around one or two Pacific time. Have you recorded from the beginning of the project and the VODs on YouTube? Yeah, every, every stream I've ever done is on there. There's like a playlist for them. Um, yeah, there's a playlist that says like writing an operating system and it goes from, from start to end. All right. So thanks for watching everyone. Catch you on the next one if you, if you come back. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks. Bye.